Right, welcome back. We continue. At this point, we are uh, done with our basic presentation of the first law of thermodynamics in the thermomechanical setting. We will move ahead now and um, move on to the second law. So, with this segment, we are going to start talking about uh, the second law. of thermodynamics. Right. So, the second law, as um, you probably know already, tells us about a quantity that we call the entropy. And because we've used S already, often in this uh, series of lectures, we're going to use the symbol eta for the, term, for the, for the entropy. So, eta, or actually eta bar, is the entropy per unit mass. Now, the entropy is a, um, it can prove to be a challenging concept. We are not going to get at all into a proper rigorous definition of exactly what this entropy is. That would require us to go into thermal physics, uh, actually into statistical mechanics, consider states of systems and so on, uh, and do a great deal of work which is uh, somewhat outside the scope of what uh, we're trying to do here for continuum physics. So, our treatment here will uh, assume that uh, we have this continuous uh, field quantity, eta bar, it's a scalar, as you can tell from the notation I've used, and uh, that we have ways of really, of actually figuring out what this is, perhaps by using statistical mechanics methods or so, and or so on, okay? Uh, so, let me just state all of that here by saying that um, we will assume that this is a quantity that is obtained uh, from statistical mechanics. Okay, so if we have such a field, the entropy per unit mass, what do we do about it in a continuum setting? Right, so the second law of thermodynamics is a statement uh, which uh, pertains to entropy production in the form that we will use it, uh, in a form that we will use, it is the following. It says that if you go ahead and compute the total entropy of the system, right, or of the body of interest, eta bar is the entropy per unit mass, rho is the mass density in the current configuration, you integrate that product over the current volume, okay? That is the total entropy. The second law talks further about the rate of change of that total entropy. And it says that the rate of change of the total entropy is greater than or equal to the heat supply to the body divided by the temperature. Okay? Of course, the heat supply to the body comes not only from the local heating, it also comes from the boundary. Okay? And uh, we've seen already in the previous two segments that the uh, heat supply from the boundary is minus Q dot N, where Q is the flux, the heat flux. So that divided by theta, dA, is the corresponding term from the boundary. This then is our statement of the second law. Okay, so this is also called the entropy, the entropy inequality or properly the entropy production inequality.
Right. As before, we are going to work on the left-hand side term, which is ready for the application of the Reynolds transport theorem, and that term, which is ready for the application of the Gauss theorem. All right, so let's do that. This is easy enough because we've done this many times already. The first term is an integral over omega t. The term on the left-hand side is an integral over omega t. We know from our study of the Reynolds transport theorem that uh, the mass density comes out unscathed and the uh, material time derivative instead is applied to the to the entropy per unit mass. This integrated over dV is greater than or equal to the integral over omega t rho r bar divided by theta, right, where theta is the temperature. I notice I haven't really stated that, so I, when I'm done with this equation, I will, or with this inequality, I will, I will put down here what theta is, and, and I've been talking about theta without really putting it down in writing. All right. Uh, okay, now when we apply the divergence theorem to the term on the, to, to, to that surface term, we get, um, let's do it stepwise, minus divergence of Q divided by theta dV. Okay, in all of this I should, I should state, uh, like I said, theta is the temperature. Right, it's a scalar, right? Okay. So, so with what we have here, we can, we, we can expand this last term, right, the term involving the divergence. When we do that, we get integral over omega t rho material time derivative of the the entropy per unit mass, dV, is greater than or equal to integral over omega t rho r bar divided by theta minus. The divergence uh, on Q divided by theta gives us one term, which is minus divergence of Q divided by theta, and another term, which is Q dotted with divergence of theta, sorry, gradient of theta, the whole thing divided by theta square. And this just comes again from our um, product rule of differentiation. The sign gets flipped on this term here because we are really differentiating 1 over theta, We're really calculating the gradient of 1 over theta, right? And that, and that gradient of 1 over theta is minus gradient theta divided by theta square. Okay, so that's what flips the sign on it. V little v. Okay, so this then is our entropy inequality or the second law in integral form. As uh, before, um, now we are making a state, we need to make a statement here in order to go to a local form. Okay, and uh, the statement that we are about to make is one that gets, uh, that is somewhat open to challenge. And the reason it's open to challenge is because properly the entropy inequality applies to the universe, okay? Right now our universe is our little body omega t. This is our universe, right? When we, you know what we're going to do next, right? We want to apply our localization argument. Okay? If that body gets very small, when that subset gets exceedingly small, right, to the order of a few atoms, okay, uh, 
this business about the entropy inequality is open to um, challenges because because thermodynamics is properly a statistical subject and then there is talk about you know the, you need to confront the question of whether you have uh, uh, you know a, a representative stat a statistical sample if the number of atoms gets too small. Um, we are avoiding that sort of argument by saying that every neighborhood remains a continuum. Right? So the idea is that, in, uh, remember, we, all, we never get down to the level of discreteness in continuum mechanics, okay? So that question is somewhat moot in this setting, okay? Uh, we are also making the, uh, making the um, assumption now that uh, even though we have the statement in integral form holding properly, because it's the ent entropy inequality holding properly for all of omega t, right? We, we are going to say that we have these sort of um, quasi-isolated systems, right? That, that each neighborhood here is of a type that we can actually apply this law to, this, this, uh, this integral e um, inequality to, okay? It's a condition that we're assuming holds, okay? So, Rather than write all those arguments, I've stated them, so I will say that we assume the integral form of the entropy inequality holds for arbitrary, but I'll take care here to say continuum subsets okay? And then of course we our localization argument leads us to conclude that um, so we can state that here. Um, okay, let, let me let me write that here first. Integral over omega t sub tilde, uh, omega t tilde, rho d eta bar dt dv is greater than or equal to integral over omega t tilde rho r bar divided by theta minus divergence of q divided by theta plus q dot gradient theta divided by theta square dv, okay? And that this holds for all omega tilde subset of omega t, okay? And then this gives us the pointwise form of the entropy inequality. Okay, so this is our point by statement of the second law, right? Okay, now uh, we need to go on from here and um, combine the first and second laws in a form that will allow us to charge ahead with the development. But that's probably best done in a separate segment, so we'll stop the segment here.